ethnic community, our policy makers in government, and indeed the generality of Nigerians to this critical issue of part of fund and the impact on the Nigerian sector, particularly the protecting education and our much desired technological development. The essence is to help us diagnose and ensure critically to remote and immediate causes able to be sent or fortunate scenario. And to accept this against the background of development in other parts of the globe, we will also expect to be properly guided as to the strategies and measures for fostering or at least minimizing or mitigating any such future occurrences. To do justice to this all important subject, the protecting search for the best possible resource person available. This chapter explains the choice of our most distinguished communication lecturer, lecturer of today. Yes, we are indeed very glad to have with us here a top flight educational, a literary time, an everyday scholar, and a researcher by excellence, Professor Abdul Rashid Nala. First and second, what is it you get in the little part? You are welcome, sir. We are indeed appreciative of the honor you have called us to take up this assignment despite your tight schedules. You will agree with me that our great, our guest lecturer is indeed exceedingly qualified to handle the team of today's lecture and to treat us to good intellectual feast. It is therefore gives me great joy to welcome Professor Abdul Rashid Nala to the Center for the Graduate of Art for this our 10th Convocation Lecture. I have no doubt by the time he is through with the lecture, we will be better educated on the subject and his written factor. Let me also use this unique opportunity to recognize our neighbor and other reputed government council chair, Chief of Solo Council Gora. We salute you for your exceptional and exemplary leadership. We are proud of you. Your eloquent achievements in all your national assignments are not worthy. We equally especially extended our appreciation to other members of the country for their high sense of commitment for this national assignment bestowed on you. We are indeed very grateful for your outstanding performance since your appointment as members of the Government Council of this great Saturday of our learning. This address will not be complete without acknowledging the presence of our distinguished invitees and guests, including our very fathers, top government functionaries, members of the clergy, our distinguished alumni, our friends from the media, and of course, our dear staff and students. I certainly welcome you all. I wish you a pleasant intellectual season. Thank you. And we all make your hand for the Please, that applause is not good enough for the director of the Federal Polytechnic of Art, the first technical polytechnic in Nigeria and Africa. So, Sarah, thank you. And thank you. The chairman of the Council, sir. Very distinguished, ladies and gentlemen. Just recently, the sometime last year, the Polytechnic was run the, by MPT as the 10th best. 8th, 8th, 10th, 8th best Polytechnic in Nigeria. I'm sorry to say this, that we are coming from, we are coming from 40, 40 position in previous years. And uh, this is kudos, yes. this is kudos to the rector and his management team. Uh, we have over 12 protecting both federal and state. And that is a federal protecting of power. Among all is here, you are the only one in units. Uh, the efforts you have put to make this 
place, one of the fastest growing polytechnic, not only in Nigeria, in Africa, Sahara, we pray it's going to yield result. By the next ranking, uh, we pray will be in the first position, inshallah. The director, sir, the German government, sir, the distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Before I call on the German government so for its opening remark, I want to say that this set of council are dedicated, very hardworking, working tirelessly to make sure that this protecting is taken to the Senate of academic essence. For the protecting of is a unique standard of learning and a place for knowledge task is to what we have in our protecting anthem. This one that therefore very distinguished and gentlemen that plans for applications are in mention our preoccupation here. Many of our staff have said in areas of science and technology, just recently, Dr. Engineer Dr. Jim Abdul, Direct Deputy Director of Academy, was awarded a patent certificate and a patent right. For his invention in production of hydrogen storage tank with palladium additive by the Honorable Minister of Science and Technology, Dr. Bonaya Odo. Please, very distinguished and gentlemen, I need to request. Okay, it's now six now. That's the Deputy Director Academy. And also recently, the West Africa Examination Council approved and adopted a book written by the Deputy Director and me, Pastor Aki Jobi, as a recommended textbook for insurance in all West African states. <laughs> the Chairman Council, sir, for me to request that book. Pastor Aki Jobi should please be outstanding. has been recommended, has been adopted, and is going to be read by all students who are going to write West African examination. You know that it would be very distinguished with this suggestion that this and many other things was as a result of the conducive environment that we provided by the Pansu. Our distinguished guest lecturer, the Albanian Chancellor of the University of Ottawa, Professor Abdullah Sheikh, Principal Officers, Man and Distinguished as of the Albanian Chancellor of the University of Ottawa, well, there is a saying that is where does the culture be? It's best that you are nation. And not the it says that just it's best before you are nation the culture be. And women will tell you that if you are in the kitchen, we can say a sumptuous need for the change. It's best that you put a knife and put a knife. 
we are good. If you are sitting going to have a nice day, to be part of your last success. So to spend time and talk to you, when there is a greater success need, you may not be going to have a nice day, to be for us to enjoy. We waste that time because they are really saying that the government is full. The problems are having the bigger, the camera, the light, the light. So the next thing that we waste the time, the result that we share, actually was the same. The master of the ceremony is the bigger, 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 I don't think there is anybody better to speak to us concerning this than our distinguished lecturer today, the Vice Chancellor of the University of Iran. Before I met him, I met him casually at the airport some two years ago. Paul was pregnant in Amakima, and his dressing. Very resplendent in person, and if you didn't know him, you would say that this, although he loves wearing traditional dresses, and how did you see him in suits? But then, even at that, when you see him, you would say that this person is just somebody that belongs to the academic world. But then, before I met him, I heard about him, and read all the things, he's a sought-out public speaker. Not just here in Nigeria, but internationally. And for him, to agree to come and address us, the only thing that I can mean say is that I'm about to speak up. But I understand that the issues that we are facing currently will inspire to share with you all the But for me, to just appreciate this time for coming to address us today, this lesson that has together with this part. For Professor Agora Sina, Vice Chancellor of Alaska State University, and have us sit down and let this situation go. Thank you very much. Once again, we start to dance together. Please ask for help and applause for the chairman of the council of the University. Thank you and thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Chancellor, for the advice. So much like coming here and getting your plan. 
Olha aqui o meu copo, para você dar sua paciência. Olha aqui o sai, sua paciência. Please, quero a nossa cruz. Please, sai, sua paciência. A nossa paz, o meu tempo de todo mundo. Olha aqui o sai, sua paciência. Olha aqui o sai, sua paciência. Please, quero a nossa cruz. 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 For five minutes for the school program. It's been streamlined now. Thank you. Please, another round of applause. The chairman of the council, very distinguished ladies and gentlemen. We are now 
in the real business of today. That is the publication lecture, and I have the honor to call on the certificate of us to come and read the citation of the guest lecturer, Professor Abrahim Nala. This Professor Abrahim Nala, please come and stand this up. With all humility and respect. The Chairman of the Council, ladies and gentlemen, permit me to stand on the already established protocol for this tenth convocation lecture as I read the citation of Professor Adorishi Nahala. Born on the 21st December 1962, Professor Adorashid Mala, a poet, scholar, critical thinker, and recipient of numerous awards locally and internationally, hails from Ilekon, Itaungo, Ilori, in Kwara State Capital. He has his post-primary education at the Government Teachers College, Gwene Yari, where he obtained his teacher's grade 2 certificate in 1981. He, he proceeded to the University of Illinois for a bachelor's degree in English and English education and came out with a second class of honors, upper division, in 1988. He had a master's degree in literature in English from the same institution in 1992. Professor Nala proceeded to Edmonton, Canada, where he capped it all with a doctoral degree in cooperative literature in 1999. His PhD dissertation was on Yoruba cocktails, cultural plurality, and oral narratives. Professor Abdurashid Nala can therefore be aptly described as a professor of English, cooperative, politics, and performance. <laughs> professor Nala went a step further to undergo a management development program at Harvard Graduate School of Education, Harvard University, Cambridge, in June 2009. And prior to his appointment as a pioneer vice chancellor and chief executive of Florida State University Manete, Professor Nana was departmental chair, Department of African American Studies, Western Indigenous University, and director of Indigenous African Discourse Projects. His areas of specialization and research interest include, among others, African Performance Studies, African Toga Theatre, African Oral Traditions and Folklore, African Globalization, Cultural Theory and Thoughts, Yoruba and Hausa Traditions, Languages and Cultures. His professional affiliations include, among others, African Literature Association, African Studies Association, International Cooperative Literature Association, Canadian Cooperative Literature Association, Modern Languages Association, Performance Studies International and Association of Nigerian Authors. <laughs> Professor Nala has authored numerous books, including Cultural Globalization and Plurality, African and the New World, African Discourse in Islam, Oral Traditions and Performance Route 2010, and Africanity, Islamicity and Performativity, Identity in the House of, in the house of Midori, University African Studies Series 2009. Again, as an extremely hardworking Vice Ch Chancellor, he has also authored three different books, uh, which includes Ilori, Poetry of Praise, 2018, Obama Lecture, 2018, and Oral Performance and African Traditional Poetry, 2016. <laughs> Besides, Professor Nala also authored Introduction of African Oral Literature in 1994, 
a model Fulani African Poetry 2004, a lovely Press Poetry Book Club 2011, and a model a new African Poetry 2001. He co authored, among other books, Introduction to African Oral Literature and Performance 2005. Functional Literacy Premier in Alsa 1993, Teacher's Guide to Functional Literacy Premier in Alsa 1993, sorry, and Introduction to African Oral Literature Volume 1, Oral Post Volume 2, Oral Poetry 1991, among others. His director invited Lectures include the Nigerian Academy of Letters Annual Lecture 2017, the Nigerian Higher Education Summit 2016, and so many others, too numerous to mention. The Coral State University mandate has continued to soar higher and higher under the leadership of Professor Adorashid Nana as a pioneer, vice chancellor, and chief executive of the institution. With each passing year, Crossu has been making progress in its tripartite mandate of teaching, research, and community development. This is due to the leadership qualities and foresight of the vice chancellor, who is now serving the second time of five years. A highly reverend and innovative scholar, Professor Nala, has made the university attractive to many admission seekers across the country and overseas due to the institution's stable academic calendar, unique programs, and world class academic standards. Professor Nala has been nominated for and received numerous awards, including the Gold Key Recognition Award, University of Alberta Student Union 1998, Hero and Icon of Good Leadership Award, National Association of Nigerian Students, Joint Campus Committee, Borough State 2017, Western Indian University's Administrative Achievement Award 2008 to 2009 for achievement as department chair. The Graduate Student Service Award, University of Alberta, the Alberta Heritage House Global Award for Student Leadership 1998, the Province of Alberta, Canada, and the Black Achievement Award for Secondary Scholastic 1998. The Black Achievement Award Society of Alberta. In February 2015, Professor Nala got the Kwame Roma Leadership Award in Administration for Excellence and Icon of Societal Development for the West African Student Union, WASU. The award is usually bestowed on eminent Nigerians, institutions, and corporate concerns of West African origin who have distinguished themselves in their various fields. In 2016, he was honored with the Distinguished Vice Chancellor and African Award by the Economic Community of West African State Youth Council, ECOWAS, Y Council. Similarly, he was conferred with African Patriotic Leader Award, African Educational Category by the Commonwealth Youth Council. Why is university won the most outstanding state university in West African award? <laughs> this and many other achievements, two numerous profession, are attributable attrib attrib to the cooperation and support of the Vice Chancellor enjoying the Vice Chancellor enjoys for all stakeholders. The Pangea Vice Chancellor of the University has been viewed around the world as a distinct African leader who has effectively used innovative leadership, entrepreneurship, and community development to place the state institution among the best African. Therefore, as far as state and indeed Nigeria celebrates its visionary university administrator, one cannot but salute his courage because by reason of his strong vision 
an unwavering commitment to creating a world class university. Professor Mala's selfless leadership and style quest for change through innovation has put Kwasu, the university, for community development on the world map. Professor Mala Adrashi is married and blessed with children. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me with another vision as I welcome to the Rosemont an icon, a genius, a mentor, and leader, and academic guru, a mobile effort leader, and an administration administrator by excellence, Professor Abdurashid Nala, the Taliban of Elisha Baruba, this school of together. I felt that was that was not beyond me. The chairman of this occasion, Mr. Pascal, the chairman of the Government Council of the Department of Technology. Director of the Technical Father, the father of all youths, the father of all Nigeria. You know, when the register came up, it was clear, and I was exceedingly happy that the register knows him very well. Because believe me, what he said is exactly the words. That is you. Uh, it's, it's my father. I'm always very proud of you. When you see him, child, you be proud. Exceedingly of his father. You can understand. Because usually, you know, the father will put up on your hands of God. You see, so sometimes you are not sure whether he loves you or he doesn't love you. But there's no one that love. You. But since I am very proud of this father, he's a great father of the team. Hello, dear boy, come out. I'm looking at the time, and I know I've been told that it's only one hour. I'm going to do my best. The principal officers, members of council, the government council, of the protecting members of management, the student staff, the protecting teaching and non-teaching, especially those who are management staff. I understand that we are on strike. Anyway, just hold If you go to every university in Nigeria, they are also on strike. With the exception of Kwara State University and the University of Colombia. We are the exception in Nigeria. Some people clap and some people refuse to clap. <laughs> If you refuse to clap, let's drop your hand. The topic of this lecture is at the heart of the current situation in our tertiary education for tertiary institutions in this country. The true education emergency Nigeria needs. The true education emergency Nigeria needs. You will agree with me. But even before the declaration of education emergency, we truly, as far as national institutions are concerned, I see the state of emergency. In 2018, the National Economic Council presented over by the Vice President, the new Sibadi. 
Called governors, we will declare emergency on education in the United States. Okay. For the budget. We also urge the state and the federal government to allocate at least 15 percent of the yearly budget to education, with a view to revolutionizing the sector. The state and federal government are also encouraged or enjoined to constitute a task force to manage the funds. And ensure infrastructure and renewal in selected schools throughout the nation. That declaration of emergency from that from last year, from 2000, towards the end of the year. And you could see immediately the Prime Minister and the Mahdi people declare the new state made some declarations. But the declaration itself is focused on an effort declaration, to have a change in our educational institution. But the main focus really, and that is the focus that oftentimes when you hear the state of emergency declared, or when you hear that there are crises. In our universities or the techniques or the education or monotechnics. It's usually about funding. There is no funding. Step one where funding, infrastructure, funding, good teaching facilities, funding. What? Everything funding. I I mean nobody that I that the funding of our university system, our national education system, protecting our education, is deficient. Very deficient. There is no way anybody that competes and brings the university to a world class level, higher education to a world class level, the world level to a world class level, without them. And I'm not surprised that here and here are out. That's not cheap. Before I left Nigeria in the early 90s, in Canada, I was, as you probably heard, a lecturer at the University of London. I don't know what I was doing. I used to teach there. I started teaching there from the late 90s. Late, late 80s, sorry, after I finished from there. And early 90s, I left. And I know that at the time I was leaving, we were just finishing the biggest strike. You know, it was a bachelor there, and then well, it was a very long slide. If the public came back by I left, I'm not going to be sure. So I think that left the slide was there. What happened in the late 90s? If some of us remember, it's exactly what is happening today. I, I for one, has not seen any fundamental change. The crisis that national institutions are facing in this nation. The crisis, especially in terms of the issue of funding, and so many other issues, especially that are linked to funding. In this lecture, however, I beg to take a different look as a scholar and thinker. Constantly, you want to review, you want to see that if an issue is being over overbeaten, perhaps you need to take another look. Overbeaten in the sense that everywhere you speak to people in the national education system, and everywhere there's a major gathering, especially. There is a big boom to the war. What you hear is that the Nigerian education system, especially the national education system, is being underfunded. Of course, the declaration is not intended to be for national schools alone. It's also for elementary school, it's also for post primary school. 
every place is being under fire. I went to the primary school I attended after the day in the Bible And I could not even recognize it because the whole team was very dilapidated. I was so angry. Very, very angry with me because I knew that primary school would be one of the best. It was started as a demonstration school. And you know, they had a lot of support. When I went, and I saw the way people were sitting down. I felt that, oh my God, this crisis is getting deep into every corner, even in my own elementary school. But the point I want to make today, and which I want us to think along with me, is not to say that one thing is not fundamental. It is fundamental. Everybody says, if it's your bank, so you see, you know, there's no money in one place, you want to just keep, keep your mouth shut. <laughs> Maybe that's how it's said. Some people also say, or not, but don't go past it. You know what I mean? But sometimes, we need to problematize and interpret and interrogate some of our sayings, some of our sayings we need to all go to look at it. Because sometimes if you interrogate, you might come into another strategy. Now, conclusion as a higher education administrator abroad and in Nigeria. And I've been doing this now for the past maybe 20 years, 20, 20 years. At least the university that we are now, this is my 10th year of budgeting. I probably will see the budgeting in the Nigeria system. We did. The truth is that my experience do not deceive me of what I have done, what I have seen, and how some of these issues are really come about to the elements that I am pushing as an issue to me. I said true education emergency because I felt that the declaration of emergency today has missed the mark. Because all of us we are looking at the same area, funding, funding. Well, I want to put it to you. There are problems if truthfulness is not funding. Or that funding is the deal of the problems that we have. There are so much greater factors, more devastating issues, more tearing apart matters, more calamitous states of our situation that cause for a declaration of emergency. That if those areas are fixed, it is likely that when we fall down, things will be better. When those areas are not fixed, you will just be buying money and putting money. Nothing is going to change. And I also put it to you. There is not all the time that money is the solution to problems. Sometimes money might not be the solution. What we want is a dignifying tertiary education system. What we want is an impactful tertiary education system. What we want is a tertiary education system that our young people to go through and come out of happy with themselves, happy for their nation, happy that they are citizens of a productive nation. Sometimes 
it is not about money. In fact, I put it to you. One of the experiences I have currently is that I am a chancellor in a university that does not receive a proper the subvention of the state government for the past four years. This is my fourth year. <laughs> not a cover towards salary. Not a cover towards facility. Not a cover towards overhead. Not a cover. I can continue. I'm not saying the pay salary and the good pay I said not a cover. Here at Florida State University, we are not working. We are not running, we are flying. And we have not stopped flying. <laughs> so it tells me, ladies and gentlemen, that maybe one thing that we are talking about is not entirely the main issue that we are talking about. I have paid past one salary, I am ready to pay this one salary. I am ready. I am totally ready. If I am asked to sign now, I will sign today, and by tomorrow everybody will see that now. <laughs> In Paris, I'm not saying this because I need to share my experience so that you understand what I'm doing. The point I'm making is that sometimes people get overwhelmed, and because of it, they're losing their balance. And they are indulging in areas that is exceedingly beyond ordinary. Sometimes when you don't have money, that is the time to plan better. That is the time every problem counts, every problem matters. That is the time what you do with every problem has to have significance. If you look at the story of our nation, I tell you, I put it before you that it's not for your money. By the way, we have a head of state that said his problem was not money, but how to spend it. Anybody tell me, problem is that there's no money, no money. We said there's no money in school. The president of this nation, he said his problem was not money, but how to do what? Hey, hey, what else do you want? The point I'm making is that we need to understand clearly I, I would have brought for our brothers who are academic staff to be here so that we can discuss this because I'm ready for this I'm saying that if we can fix this emergency that I'm talking about which I call true emergency then we will have fixed in various other areas crisis by education and the money can, which I know must come, it will even be better than we anticipate. But the way we are today, if we are part of the emergency I'm talking about, if money can, and I've heard so many trillions that I've approved now, they say, no, money is coming. That's why I left for the task of education. Uh, for the universities, I don't know if I'm going to take it. But those of all universities, they have heard a lot of stories now. The federal government has approved so much. That's so, okay, this is the one let's see first. So if this money comes, what is going to happen? Will it change the university system in Nigeria? Will our universities now be comparing with Harvard, with Cambridge, with public universities in the United States, public universities in the UK? Are we sure if they release the money today? I wish to work really think about it. The point that I was right, let's say they negotiated just like the academic staff you know, just have a duty. The private say, yes, I'm giving you trillion. I don't have any trillion, you know. Just like the same thing, no difference to the federal universities. Are you sure that if the children are protecting and make it like the best of techniques in other parts of the world, especially are you sure? Are you going to have a world class protection? Are you sincere about it? I don't really know thing. What does it mean to be an institution? What is the meaning of university? What is the meaning of protection? What is the meaning of tacit education? What does it mean? Are we delivering? Are we living up to the truth? 
true meaning of these institutions. Do we understand what it means as an academic? academic? Do we know? It's very important for us to think about this. What do we deliver? Are we delivering true education by law? Or are we delivering a make believe, a make believe type of education? What if we tell you that we oh, send Nigeria who are graduating from protecting of our own, the world of our own, send them to anywhere in the world and they will complete the field of death? This is true. Because Nigerians are very vibrant. Is it because of what they have learned in their school or because of the nature of Nigerians that are very vibrant and can work? Even fellow states that have no fellow regular community. Said my people, they live and they will suffer and they will smile. It's vibrant. In fact, you forgot that song. Anybody can sing this song. I mean, <laughs> the truth is that that reason that I hear people is not true answer to our situation. The fact that Nigerians go there is not because they are giving them the love and love. It's because they have what they are out They are very bad and they can do wonder when they come to an excellent environment where they can perform. And that's why they perform as part of the world. That is the truth. But if you look at their background, just tell a typical graduate of university today to write a letter in English. Even a dialect of English. A dialect of English. Some of you have children who are in the university who are in English. Please let them go and write to you. Just tell them all five, six things that you need them to write. In the letter you send somewhere in English. You will be very, very surprised. You will be shocked. Because the background for the is not as strong. The tertiary education, the elementary where they started from, secondly, the tertiary is not as strong. And there are so many issues. Today, there are people who declare second class, lower second class, upper first class, who sometimes, when you look at them, you just wonder what is happening. But even beyond that, what is the essence of polytechnic education? This polytechnic has been there since 1992. I was still in Nigeria then. And I remember it was Babangida that are now the region of this polytechnic and located it here. Of should definitely not be the same. And I know it's not the same because of this protest. What I'm saying is that in the true system of the responsibility of a protecting as giant, as great, as respected as your protecting, a lot more, a lot more are supposed to be happening here in Africa. We should have new industries every year. Every year. Every year. Not just in Obama, but also in Paris, in Nigeria. There are products of the workshop, the research ongoing, the collaborations that is ongoing every time. I celebrate the patents that we are declared here today. We should celebrate. But is that one payment that we will be declared for us? Are we sincere with ourselves? I was sincere. The, 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 the role of a university is to change the face of the society totally and completely in terms of progress, in terms of development. The reason my university started this program, the University of Government Development, is because we want to try our best to leave that reality and become truly a part of the little world. And with those slogans to help us to do it. So that every young, every staff, everybody have it in their head. That they are here because the community was developed. But if you ask those questions, how much since 2009 have we been able to change the face of 
for us then? Ask us that question. Come on. Come on and the startup itself felt that their responsibility is to walk their butt up. What I understand from my experience is that everybody wants easy way up. Even the event system, nobody wants to go and to go. But vigor and vigor are waste of the university system. What I'm saying, ladies and gentlemen, is that the emergency that we need to declare. The emergency. Thank you. It's emergency in the way that we will have prepared the system all around so that when funding is improved, we will be able to utilize money in the best ways possible. Let's look at our customers and look at the teachers that teach. We need emergency in ensuring that our teachers do what they are paid to do. Other than that, what we hear today, universities, institutions, elementary, secondary schools, are stories of teachers that do not teach. Sometimes, once you become the chief lecturer or professor, you think that is the end of the story. No longer going to class. You now want a junior one to be the one to teach. Most universities, you, know, you can't even see an area of value to professor anymore. You can see a tertiary institution in many of them. A team who sits down to help young people to make it to mentor. Mentor is no longer there. That is where emergency should be declared. Emergency in the ways we teach in the classroom. This is the electronic technology. When you're the age, how do we impact knowledge without the technology? Some people still call their bad dictation. You know, they will write notes and they will come and dictate. But if you do research and find out, this note, when did they form the note? Maybe that they know they have been using since the time they started teaching in the Polytechnic. I'm telling you, some of the program of the Polytechnic, if they know their friends, those who have graduated like 10 years ago, they will not don't even go to Islam. I will send you the notes. And if they read those notes, it will be exactly that you know that you take them in 2019. Exactly the same notes. I mean, imagine somebody who finished from the university and who took it, not given to him by his teacher. Because usually that is where they get the note from. He now has got the note to his own, which he is now using for his student. He has now used the note for here. And that is the whole note. And then when he comes, he doesn't take the book. He keeps going on. Uh, the international the student will say, oh my god, that is the way. They are not going to understand that this is God. <laughs> It is wrong. There is nothing more comment than academia. Academia is the most comment in the world. Because every day new research is taking place. Every day new scholarly work is being published. Every day new thinking is coming up. Every day new experiments are being performed. Every day new books are being published. New journals are coming up that are reporting new research. If you teach something this semester, the next semester should be different. Even if you are going to ask, even if you are going because there are new things, you must revise. You must revise. You must bring something new. What do you say of the chief lecturer that is not even probably teaching you and is collecting new salary and new work, professor? He's supposed to supervise. What does he do? Let's finish this teaching issue. This is fraud. There's nothing more fraudulent than the teacher that is just standing before and dictating the same note here, here, 
illegal. It is more, it is criminal. It is criminal. It is criminal. Yes. We need emergency in that area. Because put the best of money in youth education. If that does not change, nothing will change. Nothing will change. The university system, polytechnic system, all those good. It's about Ligo and Ligo. It's not about you going to sleep at home. No. You have to go to the library, you have to go to the pool, you have to go to the workshop, you have to do the work, you have to go to the laboratory, you have to do the laboratory work and do the research. That is what it is. You know, the chairman said I'm always in my mind with that. I love it. Because I love to show that my continent, my country, is great. I will go to it. And anywhere I go, I'm always in it. I just came out from the US. And I was walking around when I lived there for the US. Even in a place that is extremely cold, help me I was making sure. I mean, of course, I'll put some feeling that is of course. I'll put some. <laughs> but I will always have my heart. Even if I so many things to cover. I sit down in the room like this. I open up. My people will come and admire. Wow. They're from where? Are you a king? <laughs> I'll say, you see, everybody who has this in Nigeria, we are all kings in Nigeria. <laughs> we are beautiful people, actually. We are very beautiful. We are very beautiful in this country. So the point I'm making is that except we change that perspective, Without vigor, there is no protection. Without vigor, forget it. They call you chief lecturer, the third lecturer, one lecturer, two professor, and you get there. What we do accreditation now, you know, because it is the same lecturers that will sit down to write the requirement. They will go down to write the requirement for the office of the chief lecturer. It has to have habits. You know, that kind of professor for that kind of It's not the issue we are talking about. When you don't even teach, when you don't do research, how much money do you bring into the university? How much money do you bring into protect? Your job is not to say every day is about your salary. That is what it is in the general system. Salary, salary, salary. When the chairman of the board came in, when you were appointed, he said it here. He said they are all of you. And they told me that the world will be number one. Stop all of them. But, and that is great. Because it has to be number one. It has to be important. Start with student welfare. But there's no amount of great welfare that will uplift the status of this nation. Let all the money go to welfare. You may just continue to eat and eat and eat and as well be, you can't even work. Because you are paying this one And your nation will keep growing because your nation cannot go. It is your hard work and sweat. And imagine, some people don't know that lecturers can bring in money that will give them laboratory food. It's not everything that is provided by government or by the university. It is true, academic staff. Because of these grants that you want to put together, that is able to give money, big enough to even create a language in your university or your protection. How much are we doing? What you see all over the world are lecturers who become professors, lecturers who become chief lecturers who have never in their lives got a couple of grants outside of the institution. They have never. This is impossible in another part of the world. You can never rise from one level to the other. You cannot show that you are enterprising, that you collaborate with industry, that industry has confidence in you, they can fund you, and that you actually do the right thing by students, and student evaluation is good because they say you are always coming to class. You are always teaching them, you are doing this hard work, you must pay with you in the laboratory to do this hard, they publish with you. All this must be there. So we need emergency in that area. What you have is 
supervision. Supervision. When people supervise people today, you know the other thing, but I call it enslavement. Enslavement. You are doing PhD, you are doing master's degree, and you, your supervisor will tell you, don't forget, it's not about your work. We have sexual harassment, we have harassment of money, we have harassment of everything. I have seen people who carry here, big tuber of here, to go and give their supervisor. It is not only the KBSC that is out to get here, everyone. It's the KBSC. Every supervisor now declares the level of the KBSC in his class. It's not done. It's not done. Go to our university system today and see what is going on. Go to our protectors today and see what is going on. Our students are disrespected, and I'm saying this with every sense of it that I have as a bachelor of the drivers. Because of our education, students are being like kings and queens. They are customers. They should love what they do that they want to come back again. Most of the time, when this school finish, you know what they want to see when you tell them. Because they've been sexually abused, they've been harassed, people are taking money out of them. They, can't, they don't even want to supervise them, but they can't say this. Because they're never there. Some of them feel that if they complain about you, <laughs> nobody will supervise them, number one. Number two, they will feel they will never do mm. These are people that should be our customers. We need an emergency to be declared in the relationship between supervisors and supervisee in tertiary education in Nigeria. That's what we need in emergency. Because what they are doing at that moment, they are studying certain issues, certain problems that are more likely to help to live this nation. And we need serious work together, collaboration. What you, what you need is not to make life difficult for somebody. Or to ask you to come. At the end of the day, when they bring all this now and everything, you still do not supervise them. They will now go and pop it from somewhere. They will bring it to you and you just ask them, go oh, and you give them a name. I am not leaving out any institution when I am saying this. Especially in the system that we run in this nation. Every day to do this, we are doing the service for Nigeria. Every day. Every day we are chopping up gradually for the greatness of this nation. People who solve politicians, they will not have bad at this point. What do you do? You also have lost the politician. I'm serious. And they say, well, you see these politicians, they are just counselors and they build houses. You get that? Leave the first floor and the last level. Why are you in the system? Why are you complaining? If you want to be a counselor, go and be a counselor. If you want to be a commissioner, go. Stop saying, look at this commissioner, who will be the government commissioner in five years. Focus on the job you are taking. Do it the way you should be done. It is not about money alone. If I'm able to run my university for more than for about four years now without subvention from government, and I'm coming back there, it means that if you do money, I might have not say government does not need to give us subvention. Should even give us more than what is subvention? That is true. So that's what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is that the money you have, how are you spent it? The little you have. What are the choices you have made? What are the facilities you are watching? How accountable are you, cover by cover, in the way you have used it? The building you put in place, how standard is that? Or are you cutting corners? 
living in the university system. Is that or in the tertiary education system? And if you do not help to create new 